Hello, welcome to the video. This is the first of a series I'm going to do about underrated and long forgotten, not all of them maybe, but some of them, of the London pub bands. Some of them were fantastic, some were not so. I'm going to concentrate on the fantastic ones. There were some great bands played in pubs during the 1970s and 80s, especially in London, but all over the UK. And the pub rock movement spawned all sorts of things, including punk, new wave, and all that stuff. So stick with me, and I'll tell you about some bands you may have forgotten or never known about. The first one I'm going to talk about is The Inmates. <laughs> Lee's singer was a guy called Bill Hurley, a great big guy, Big Bill we used to call him, um, who had a fantastic voice. Dirty R&B would be a good way to describe how they sounded. They had minor hits with um, cover versions. The Walk was one I remember. Bill Hurley was the lead vocalist. Peter Gunn was the lead guitarist. Tony Oliver was the second guitarist. And Ben Donnelly was the bass player. They had various drummers, ending up with Eddie Edwards, as I recall, who also played with the Vibrators and other such acts. I put them on at the Cricket us a few times in the 80s. They, they weren't uh, normally on the circuit, but I think they used to want to play as a warm-up if they were going to do a show on the continent, because they were a lot bigger in France and Germany, I think, than they were over here. Bill wasn't always well, he had a few problems, and for a little period during the early 1980s, I remember Barry Masters, lead singer of Eddie and the Hot Rods, that stood in for him for a while. Um, but it was Bill, and I can remember sometime in the mid to late 80s, Bill went off to do a to do a project with some more people and they put out a single, Watch Me Catch Fire. Well, unfortunately, it came out exactly the same time as the Bradford City Fire. So that was um, not got no airplay and sank without trace. Well, that wasn't the inmates, but that is the inmates. Let's talk about G.T. Moore and the reggae guitars. Get the idea out of your head, it's some sort of dub reggae thing. Back in the pub rock days, it was more rock with a reggae beat. <laughs> Members of the reggae guitars included Tom Robinson, who went on to become Tom Robinson 2468 Motorway. Anyway, it was um, Gerald Thomas Moore, who was um, G.T. Moore. He was born in Reading, I think, or somewhere around that bit. And he's had a very eccentric life, especially in the early days. I was very impressed with his first band, Heron. They recorded everything outdoors, so it gives it a totally unique sound. <laughs> But that wasn't reggae, that was more um, hippie folk stuff. But it was very good if you get a chance to hear that. But on to GT Moore and the reggae guitars. For a time, they used to play every night, just about. And if you were in somewhere like, I'm trying to think now, where I saw them. I think I saw them first at the Windsor Castle in the Harrow Road, funny enough. And it was a big band. As I recall, there were probably about eight of them on stage. And um, this is the sort of thing that they played. to do the college circuit they toured with people like, i think jimmy cliff they toured with and then they broke up and gerald thomas moore gt moore went on to well he went to at one stage he went to jamaica and he did sessions for lee scratch perry and he worked with him and he developed much more of a reggae style and subsequently he was became quite a um, force in the reggae world albeit in the background. So that's GT Moore on the reggae guitars. Check them out. There's some stuff on YouTube. Well worth catching. Don't go away because we've got more after this. But first, a word from our sponsors. Were you around during those days or are you just um, a bit of a tourist finding out what was going on in the good old days of pub rock? <laughs> Well, either way, let me know who you want to know about. Frankly, I saw practically all the bands, to be honest here. I mean, that sounds a bit arrogant, doesn't it? But apart from me putting on bands, I also went to watch a lot. So if you want me to talk about anybody, let me know down in the comments. And if you like this, please like, give me a bit of encouragement so I can do some more. And um, subscribe, of course. Follow me and see what more we're going to do. Thank you very much. And now back to the music. 
What you've got to bear in mind is the whole pub rock scene was very fluid. It basically started, as we know, in the early 1970s, and it petered out, well, by the time it came to the pandemic of 2019, was it, it had all gone. Its glory days were the 1970s and 1980s, and as I said, it was very fluid. The bands came and went, the venues came and went, and the people who played the bands were often very fluid themselves, which meant that one night it might be somebody on drums, the next night it might be somebody else. Not every band was like that, but one that was was a band called Juice on the Loose. Now, this is formed by a guy called Ron, whose surname is properly pronounced Kavanagh, and he was a musician. He'd been in a band called Kavanagh's Crisis Band, and they used to play a lot at the Hope and Anchor, and that sort of morphed into Juice on the Loose. <laughs> Time, they were the biggest band on the pub rock circuit. Well, certainly one of them. They could pack out any venue and they'd take top money. They were doing covers mainly of um, blues, soul, R&B tracks of the time, but they're doing it very well. The band consisted of, as I say, Ron was the, the lead singer and the guitarist, well, a guitarist, they had a few. You had um, Fran Byrne on drums, who'd been with Bees Make Honey. Saxophone, Frank Mead, who'd been with just about everybody. You had, from Mighty Baby and Ace, you had Alan Bam King. You also had Charlie Hart, bass. He'd been in Kilburn and the High Roads and Slim Chance. Keyboards, in the very early days, was Diz Watson from Diz and the Doorman. And also Geraint Watkins. So they um, sort of alternated, they played when they could. The thing is, they were formed really not as a band to do gigs. They were formed as a band to back visiting American artists who came over at the time, especially for Chisick and Ace Records, who would put an artist on tour with their backing band, and Juice and the Loose were formed as that. They were the best, probably, of the musicians on the London circuit. They were very used to most of the style. The people they backed were people like Dr. John, Clowns, Frogman Henry, Big J McNeely, Doug Sam, Flacco Jimenez a bit later, I think, and champion Jack Dupree, artists of that calibre. And what would happen is they'd probably play a few shows and they'd do a live album or they'd do a, a studio album and these musicians, Juice and Loose, would back them. And when they weren't doing that, they would go out and do their own shows. And after a while, they became, as I say, the biggest, well, one of the biggest bands on the London pub circuit. And I must admit, I found it hard to get them to play, especially when Ron was in the band. He left about 84, 85. So I think they finally packed it in about 1988, something like that. Only thing I found online is a reunion with the original lineup, which happened in about 2013. Now, this obviously is not them at their peak, but it gives you an idea of the musicianship. I know, I know, I know. And I'd like to be the one to tell him so, yeah. that's juice on the loose thank you for watching if you enjoyed it please like subscribe follow me give me a thumbs up comment let me know what you think and i'll see you next time thank you very much for watching especially to the end goodbye